Well, this customer concern wasn't very hard to duplicate. They say the key won't come out and it won't even start. You notice it takes it a while for this to come on. We gotta check engine light over there. Look how long that took. And we will not start. We get a service power steering message. Uh, let's see, do we get anything else? Service airbag, service tire monitor, service theft deterrent system. This still looks like a fun one. So I got us a pre-scan here and right off with the topology, I, I can see some things missing that I should have. A BCM, a EBCM, and this is, should be power steering. Yes, power steering control module. Cause you know, we've got, got this message here. So that means we've got a power steering control module. And if we just look at some of these codes, um, lost column with body control module, uh, lost column with body control module. Uh, this says low speed CAN bus, but a U0020, uh, I, I think that's supposed to be a uh, uh, class two, low speed class two. Uh, lost column with body control. Let's see, low speed. Uh, I, I really think that's class two. Lost column with EBCM, body control module body control module. So right off, like I said, BCM, EBCM, power steering control module, I don't have communication with. I just quickly tell that from the pre-scan. Now the BCM, EBCM, and power steering all communicate on high-speed CAN bus though, so pin 6 and 14 on the DLC. So what's the likelihood of having a, a broken CAN bus circuit um potentially yeah we do have communication with ECM TCM so it seems like things on one side of the network we can talk to maybe things on the opposite side we can't talk to so wiring diagram is going to come in handy for this thing um and then uh, we'll go about figuring out what's wrong with this thing so a little bit of history on this, this is 2015 Malibu um they were driving it everything was good this is a, a wholesale car dealer they drove it to a cleanup shop they went and picked it up from the cleanup shop got it back they drove it around a little bit more and then it ended up like this so that's all the history i know on it um not really much other information to be had about it um so let's go into our diagrams here on the all data uh, we're going to look at information bus and just pull up the high speed can real fast and just see what's involved with that. All right, this diagram's actually kind of a little bit confusing. Um, it has lots of RPO, RPO code options um, and actually can have terminating resistors in different places based on which RPO codes you have. So let me just kind of show you this here. You see right here, we've got a, a 120 resistor here, a 120 resistor here in the engine control module. This is the body control module. And also we've got a terminating resistor right here that is just plugged into the bus somewhere. But we have this jumper bar here and then we've got our PO codes here so you can see here and here we could have different modules uh, based on which RPO codes we have and this says minus E or a UE1 or a VRI we have VRI so I'm not really worried about this leg I don't I'm pretty positive we don't have this resistor here. So we should have this side. We have a chassis control module and a uh, telematics if we got a UE1. Now if you don't know the RPO codes, 
most cars and trucks, it's in the glove box. At some point, for some reason, GM changed that. Some of them are now in the trunk, and some of them you can't get at all. Uh, you can usually go to your dealer, your local dealer, and ask them to print off the, uh, the vehicle build sheet for you. Most of them will do that, no problem. You'll just need the last eight of the VIN number for that. But like on this car, it is in the trunk. So if we come back here and lift this up, right there's our build sheet. So we've got our VRL or an I right there. So let's see, zoom in here. Okay, so VRI and UE1. So we have those. So yeah, we're definitely going out of the BCM for that external uh, external uh, resistor. Ah, can't think this morning. So by this diagram, our our pin 6 and 14 go into the body control module out of the body control module and then they can they split and go two different directions it's not our typical daisy chain all the way around the car it will actually split and go two different directions because of this uh j uh 231 and j232 uh junction connectors or splices um and as long as we can still read our 120, this circuit is still good end to end though, because we've got to go through the BCM before that, that branch. So let's disconnect the battery real fast, get our ohm meter, and just check for our network resistance. I always, if I'm doing a DLC resistance check, I always take the battery loose. So ground cable took off right here and let's see what our resistance reading says well that's kind of odd you see how we're changing and we're in kilo ohms this is where you've got to kind of just know the cars a little bit i'm going to show you something it's going to throw you off for a second we've got the battery disconnected okay i've got the key on still the keys in the on position look at this <laughs> this is due to voltage being on the network now how is the car powered up you might think it's because i got my jumper cable still on here but no it's i mean you take this off and uh so nothing is connected to this battery there's no way this battery can flow current but we've still got a dash on you've got to know the car this car is equipped with auto stop see here auto stop that means there's a second auxiliary battery and y'all might have caught a peek of it when we looked at this uh rpo code stuff it's right here You've got to take both batteries loose all right so let me get this off and then we'll we'll check that that uh resistance again all right so there we go we got that off of there dash is now off and there we go 60 ohms so a lot of you might just think well, you just turn the key off well yeah you can do that but then you gotta wait for everything to go to sleep some cars take a long time cars with issues sometimes don't go to sleep so that's why I, I make it a habit if I'm doing this check disconnect the batteries um, then you know you've got a good reading so we've got 60 ohms here 61.4 that's that's real close this car has actually got two different cam buses there's 6 and 14 and then 12 and 13 is a uh, chassis bus and you can see it's 60 ohms as well. well what about to ground because we've shown before we can have shorts to ground cause issues so if we just check to pin four or five 
we get 13,000 ohms, that's okay. If we move from our pin 12, our chassis bus over to a powertrain bus, okay, uh, 3,000 ohms, so that's still pretty good. I'm not too worried about that. If this was, I don't really worry too much about this unless it's sub 1,000 ohms. Then, then we might have a module issue that's pulling the bus down a little bit, but it doesn't seem to be this case. We can even change to our other pin here and still get the same 3,000 ohms. So far, we know that our CAN bus is a complete circuit and we're not having any kind of resistance to ground that's gonna be pulling the bus down. I wasn't too worried about that because if we did, we wouldn't have module communication with everything. So since we can talk to the ECM, TCM, that kind of ruled that out for me anyway. It also rules out like a short to power, like a 12 volt or five volt pulling it up because then we still have no calm with anything. So, where would you guys go from here? I do get a lot of comments of like, where do you even start when you've got an issue like this? We've got multiple modules not talking. Uh, the car doesn't really do much other than we see the, the cluster come on eventually and we can talk to a few modules. So my answer is just pick one place and start there. It, it's, it's really, if you get into this thought of, I've got no comm to the BCM, the EBCM, the power steering module. I've got all these lights, uh, theft, deterrent, airbag, things like that. Just pick one place. Um, start there. And in most cases, if you start there, it will lead you on the path to find the problem. And the a problem might be one thing causing all of this. You, you never really know. Sometimes you've got multiple issues, but in a case like this, I think we're going to find one problem. Uh, so really on this car, the easiest place for me to start is really the BCM. But let's, let's say that's not the easiest place. Let's say uh, the EBCM, which is the brake module or the power steering module would be easier. We can start there and lead us back to where we need to go. Um, it doesn't really matter. So I think, I mean, I know the BCM is the easiest place to go, but I, I'm thinking I'm going to start with something else and uh, just do it the long way to get us back to where we need to go. Because from the BCM, we, we still might need to go somewhere else. I'm not real sure. That's just the for me, the easiest place is, is is like right here behind this fuse box. But like I say, sometimes that's not the easiest. There's other places. So let's see what else we got out here. I know there's an EBCM. It is right there is the uh, BPMV section of it. So the electrical part is going to be on the bottom down there so it's not really hard to get to not really easy to get to either and then there is a power steering control module you can kind of see the motor housing of it right there way down in there and the connectors will be down there somewhere also so if this was on a lift that would be real easy to get to so which one would y'all guys want to start with doesn't really matter to me we'll just pick one i think i might try to unplug that ebcm and snake the harness out where i can work with it right here um, i might can also do the same down there i'm not real sure yet but we'll start with one of those since you know they're kind of harder to get to i guess but in some cases that might be easier all right so my ebcm connector wasn't too bad to get to we just kind of unhook the uh the coolant reservoir and just move it out of the way the plug was straight down there i've got it unlashed got it moved up here where i can get to it real good i do have the battery hooked back up and my jumper cables on my van just to keep the battery topped off because we got key on we're just going to use a voltmeter here check powers and grounds load them with a test lot and we need to know powers and grounds to this thing what what this module needs to talk so on all data, we're gonna go OE diagrams, ABS, 
systems. And we're just gonna look at this module power and ground because this is what it, the module is gonna need to communicate here. So you can see we get two fuses sending battery power. We've got also two grounds here. And then we have all these data lines and then an ignition right here on pin 33. So we need to know pin 1, 25, 13, 38, and 33. That's the powers and grounds for this module to talk. So we can either look up a connector view of this thing or we can kind of just know that these are black. My grounds are black. There's 13 and 38, 1 and 25. They're going to be red, yellow, red, gray. And just experience knowing this connector, I know the big terminals here are either going to be power or ground. And if we just look in the very end here, if I can turn this around where you guys can see. I'm not really sure if you'll be able to make it out, but the back two pins on this side are black wires. So I know those are my, my ground wires and these are gonna be my powers. There's no real good way to do this, but I've got my ground lead to my meter and one of the grounds here. The other end, if I just touch it to the terminal on the opposite end, you see bulb lights up, we get 13 volts. If I go to the other pin down here, 13 volts so that proves I've got both of my main power feeds here and that one ground is good so now I just need to move this ground to this side do the same thing just check one of these powers over here okay so there we go we got powers and grounds all right I still need to find this pin 33 and check our ignition turn on because module needs something to wake it up it's going to be this ignition circuit i bet all right it was a little hard to try to do this but anyways i looked at the connector real good this pin right here that i got my watt lead in that's 38 so basically just count it backwards to find 33 here and like i said i got key on let me show you that we still got our key on but our meter doesn't show any voltage here. Well, now that could be just a low current turn on. So let's take our bulb out of the circuit. So bulbs out of the circuit here. We still have no voltage there. So we're, we don't have turn on. So pin 33 right here is not turning on. Okay, now we gotta find where this is. Um, and if this was on GM, this would link us to the enable circuit. I think that's what they call this. But all data doesn't link stuff. So let's just go out of here. I'm just take my word for it. That's going to an enable circuit. So. If we go to information bus here, data com. Um, where's my enable high speed? Oh, communications enable right there. So we can see body control module is responsible for these ignition turn ons. As you can see, we got ECM, fuel pump driver, TCM. And then on this output side, we've got EBCM, power steering, chassis, telematics. And we don't have communication with these things. So this is where I'm going next. But oddly enough, we still we don't have communication to BCM. So if you watch the part one or two maybe of the Lightning Strike 2018 model truck, I, I kind of covered this a little bit, how like if I had no calm with the BCM, I wouldn't go necessarily to these other modules first and basically rule them bad 
until I had a good working communicating BCM. Once I got the BCM online, then I'd go back to all the other modules and figure out why they are not communicating. And that's exactly why, because it turns modules on by a wake up signal or ignition turn on or something like that. So we now need to go to the BCM and figure out what's going on with that thing. All right, now I pretty much already knew I was going for the BCM because I had no comment with that. And me knowing the system, I knew I need that module alive before the car really functions. But a lot of you may not know the system. I'm, I end up with a car. I don't know the system very well. And I just wanted to show that as long as you just start somewhere, it will lead you in the direction you need to go. So I just wanted, that's why I started with the EBCM. I just wanted to prove it to you that, you know, multiple modules, you know, down, if you follow the steps correctly, it will still lead you in the right direction. So we're now going after this BCM to see what's wrong with it. Why is it not communicating? And first thing we're gonna do, check the powers and grounds and any kind of inputs that would wake this thing up. On this car, this BCM, it's just powers and grounds. It'll actually communicate just by waking itself up, like opening a door, uh, turning a light on, turning the key on. It'll just wake up by itself. Um, so I got a diagram pulled up here and it has a lot of power inputs and four grounds so we've got to just go through all of these check all of them check all of our grounds determine if we've got all these there and you can see right here we have those two ignition turn ons that the bcm is sending out to turn modules on uh, this one here was the ecm stuff and i'm pretty sure that one right there was the ebcm and power steering stuff all right, so basically just got the fuse box moved down out of the way. We can get to all the connectors here. And I've got my voltmeter here with my, my bulb in the line, okay? And it's gonna be real hard for me to show both of this at the same time, but I'm just gonna show the BCM. This white connector down here at the very bottom, this is X1. And they're gonna count up going up this BCM. So we got X1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. And on our diagram, we've got on X1, we've got power on pin 2, 4, and 3. And then we've got a ground on pin 1. So as you can see, we've got ground and then three powers. Okay. So I'm just going to start there. I'm just going to back probe my ground here and probe into one of the powers. And it's hard using two hands like this, but there you go. Bulb is on and we've got voltage. So I know I can use this ground for the rest of my power testing. So I'm just gonna go through all those real fast and uh, check all my powers. All right, so I'm just gonna quickly go through my powers. You can see the bulb light up. We got 12 volts there, 12 volts there. There we go. So X1, all my powers are good. And I'm knocking stuff over. My flashlight back here. So now let's go to X2, the, the blue one. We've got power in three, four, and one. So pin one, got power there. Pin three, pin four. And let's see, do we got anything else on that one? Nope, now we need to go to X4, pin 20. So it's this black one and the color is red and yellow. And luckily enough, right there on the top, 
is a red and yellow this one right here so if we pin into that one I've got not my ground out let's go back out here so you can see and I keep knocking my ground out here come on stay in there so there we go 13 volts and our next one is going to be X5 pins 3 and 4 so that's the brown one up here and pin 3 need to get my grounds in here a little better I know y'all are not going to be able to very much see all this but there we go there's pin 3 is that right pin 3 yep pin 3 and then pin 4 so we've just verified all of our powers now we just need to run through our grounds we already know we've got one good ground here our next one will be x2 pin 2 so right there we've got a bulb lit up we've got 12 volts down there and then x3 or no let's see x4 pin 20 so that's this plug and this black wire things are going to be a little hectic here but so this black wire right here is going to be my x x4 pin 20 if i remember right um oh no that's 26 pin 26 so yeah there we go we got a light bulb our next ground is going to be x6 pin 3 so x6 is the pink one up here and the pins are kind of covered you can't really see them too well but i've already looked at it pretty good and i know that it's this terminal right here and there you go bulb lit up and voltage so we have just verified all of our powers and grounds to this thing is that enough to condemn this module i think so i mean the module doesn't need an ignition to turn on for it to be able to communicate it communicates strictly off battery power and grounds no ignitions because the body control module will stay awake after you turn the ignition off and things like that so this PCM's got an issue, something's wrong with it, it is bad. All right, so let's do a little experiment here. We can't talk to the EBCM in the power steering module because the BCM is not turning on that ignition wake up. So let's see what happens if we bypass it, basically send power on that line and see if those modules will wake up and talk. Uh, my theory is they will secondly we're going to be testing to make sure that that circuit isn't just shorted to ground i don't think short that wire shorted to ground will keep the the bcm from communicating but it's a test so let's check it out i've got one wire is just back probed into a power and we're going to back probe into that uh turn on wire going out to the ebcm it was pin what was it on the uh, diagram Let me get back over here is this white and blue x4 pin 23 so x4 is our black one here I know you ain't gonna be able to see very well but this bottom pin here is 21 so this would be 22 that is actually ignition turn on going out to the ECM but the ECM gets a separate ignition turn on as well and then this is pin 23 here so if I just probe into that our light is not on so that means it's not short to ground 
me get it in here to where it'll stay and we will see if uh, we can read some data from those modules now. Let's go back home, go back over to our scan tool and EBCM. And we can now talk to it. Um, I don't think we're equipped with that. This doesn't really matter either. If y'all don't know about these, these are like questions even GM software will ask you. Read fault codes, DTCs, and lost comma with BCM. So we've now proved the BCM is just not turning on our enable circuit to get out to the EBCM. We've definitely got something wrong with this body control module. So I got the BCM out, and of course, one thing you're gonna to wanna to do is always, you know, check your pin fitment, you know, get you some terminated leads, and do pin drag test on all your powers and grounds, and make sure everything feels nice and tight. Um, I generally use a one size smaller than what the terminals actually are, because if, if a smaller terminal has good enough drag where I can feel it, then the larger terminal is definitely going to have drag as well and you don't run the risk of spreading that terminal out so i went through all these all of them check out fine no issues got the bcm took out of the case and i was just looking it over to see if i could spot any kind of damage any kind of corrosion and i'm not seeing anything at all it's really clean board nothing burnt nothing at all that looks out of the ordinary so i think the bcm just died for some reason back here on this malibu and uh gotta say brand new bcm got to put in programmed it is back in its home there there's the old one, and we are running, yay, and no lights, no nothing, no issues, so that's a fix, everybody. Thanks for watching. We'll see you guys later.